Stephen Hawking is one of the most celebrated geniuses of our time. While the legendary scientist has passed away, his legacy lives on and continues to inspire people all over the world. His work in the field of physics and the scientific theories he came up with are some of the most interesting subjects of debate among modern astronomers. With the recent launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, scientists may finally prove one of Hawking's theories and confirm the existence of the multiverse. Let's take a closer look at these latest reports. Before he died, Stephen Hawking worked on one last theory which has been a source of controversy ever since. He proposed the existence of the multiverse, a theory that implies the existence of a parallel universe that functions as a mirror to the one we exist in. Parallel universes are no longer just a feature of a good sci-fi story. There are now some scientific theories that support the idea of parallel universes beyond our own. However, the multiverse theory remains one of the most controversial theories in science. Our universe is unimaginably big. Hundreds of billions, if not trillions of galaxies spinning through space, each containing billions or trillions of stars. Some researchers studying models of the universe speculate that the universe's diameter could be 7 billion light years across. Others think it could be infinite. Multiverses and parallel worlds are often argued in the context of other major scientific concepts like the Big Bang, string theory, and quantum mechanics. Humanity's ideas about alternate realities are ancient and varied. In 1848, Edgar Allan Poe even wrote a prose poem in which he fancied the existence of a limitless succession of universes. But the multiverse concept took off when modern scientific theories attempting to explain the properties of our universe predicted the existence of other universes where events take place outside our reality. If they exist, those universes are separate from ours, unreachable and undetectable by any direct measurement. And that makes some experts question whether the search for a multiverse can ever be truly scientific. The multiverse is a term that scientists use to describe the idea that beyond the observable universe, other universes may exist as well. Multiverses are predicted by several scientific theories that describe different possible scenarios, from regions of space and different planes in our universe to separate bubble universes that are constantly springing into existence. The one thing all these theories have in common is that they suggest the space and time we can observe is not the only reality. Scientists have been unable to explain the features of our universe so far. There are two possible explanations for this. The first is that we need newer, better theories to explain the properties of our universe. The other is the possibility that there are many different universes and we exist in the one that is nice and comfortable. Perhaps the most scientifically accepted idea comes from what's known as inflationary cosmology, which is the idea that in the minuscule moments after the Big Bang, the universe rapidly and exponentially expanded. Cosmic inflation explains a lot of the observed properties of the universe, such as its structure and the distribution of galaxies. One of the theory's predictions is that inflation could happen over and over again, perhaps infinitely, creating a constellation of bubble universes. Not all of those bubbles will have the same properties as our own. They might even be spaces where physics behaves differently. Some of them might be similar to our universe, but they all exist beyond the realm we can directly observe. Another compelling type of multiverse is called the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is the theory that mathematically describes how matter behaves. Proposed by physicist Hugh Everett in 1957, the many worlds interpretation predicts the presence of branching timelines or alternate realities in which our decisions play out differently, sometimes producing wildly different outcomes. This theory suggests that there are an infinite number of parallel Earths, and when you do an experiment and you get the probabilities, basically all that proves is that you live on the Earth where that was the outcome of that experiment. According to this interpretation, versions of you could be off living the many different possible lives you could have led if you'd made different decisions. However, the only reality that's perceptible to you is the one you inhabit. Scientists believe that if these other Earths exist, they do so in overlapping dimensions we can't access. This type of multiverse is referred to as a level 3 multiverse, where multiple scenarios are playing out in branching realities. By contrast, the multiple universes predicted by some theories of cosmic inflation are referred to as a level 2 multiverse, where fundamental physics can be different across the different universes. Unfortunately, scientists don't think it's possible to travel between universes, at least not according to our current understanding of how physics works. Even though certain features of the universe seem to require the existence of a multiverse, nothing has been directly observed that suggests it exists. So far, the evidence supporting the idea of a multiverse is purely theoretical and in some cases philosophical. 
Some experts argue that it may be a grand cosmic coincidence that the Big Bang forged a perfectly balanced universe that is just right for our existence. Other scientists think it is more likely that any number of physical universes exist and that we simply inhabit the one that has the right characteristics for our survival. Scientists argue about whether the multiverse is even an empirically testable theory. Some would say no, given that, by definition, a multiverse is independent of our universe and impossible to access. But perhaps we just haven't figured out the right test. We may never know if our universe is just one of many, but multiverses are among the predictions of various theories that can be tested in other ways, and if those theories pass all their tests, then maybe a multiverse holds up as well. Or perhaps some discovery will help scientists figure out if there is something beyond our observable universe. However, the universe is not constrained by what our understanding of it is. If something is currently untestable, that does not mean that it's not real, it just means that we don't know how to test it yet. In the 1970s, Stephen Hawking proposed that dark matter, the invisible substance that makes up the most matter in the cosmos, may be made of black holes formed in the earliest moments of the Big Bang. Now, astronomers have developed a theory that explains not only the existence of dark matter, but also the appearance of the largest black holes in the universe. An exciting aspect of this idea is how it elegantly unifies two challenging problems scientists are hard at work on. These are the probing of the nature of dark matter and the formation and growth of black holes. Dark matter makes up over 80% of all the matter in the universe, but it doesn't directly interact with light in any way. It just floats around being massive, affecting the gravity within galaxies. It's tempting to think that black holes might be responsible for this elusive stuff. After all, black holes are famously dark, so filling a galaxy with black holes could theoretically explain all the observations of dark matter. Unfortunately, in the modern universe, black holes form only after massive stars die, then collapse under the weight of their gravity. So making black holes requires many stars, which requires a bunch of normal matter. Scientists know how much normal matter is in the universe from calculations of the early universe where the first hydrogen and helium formed, and there simply isn't enough normal matter to make all the dark matter astronomers have observed. That's where Hawking came in. In 1971, he suggested that black holes formed in the chaotic environment of the earliest moments of the Big Bang. There, pockets of matter could spontaneously reach the densities needed to make black holes, flooding the cosmos with them well before the first stars twinkled. Hawking suggested that these primordial black holes might be responsible for dark matter. While the idea was interesting, most astrophysicists focused instead on finding a new subatomic particle to explain dark matter. What's more, models of primordial black hole formation ran into observational issues. If too many formed in the early universe, they changed the picture of the leftover radiation from the early universe, known as the cosmic microwave background. That meant the theory only worked when the number and size of ancient black holes were fairly limited, or it would conflict with measurements of the CMB. The idea was revived in 2015 when the Laser Inferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory found its first pair of colliding black holes. The two black holes were much larger than expected, and one way to explain their large mass was to say they formed in the early universe, not in the hearts of dying stars. In new research, scientists at the European Space Agency took a deep dive into the theory of primordial black holes, exploring how they might explain the dark matter and possibly resolve other cosmological challenges. To pass current observational tests, primordial black holes have to be within a certain mass range. In the new work, the researchers assumed that the primordial black holes had a mass of around 1.4 times the mass of the Sun. They constructed a model of the universe that replaced all the dark matter with these fairly light black holes, and then they looked for observational clues that could validate or rule out the model. The team found that primordial black holes could play a major role in the universe by seeding the first stars, the first galaxies, and the first supermassive black holes. Observations indicate that stars, galaxies, and supermassive black holes appear very quickly in cosmological history, perhaps too quickly to be accounted for by the processes of formation and growth that we observe in the present-day universe. Primordial black holes, if they do exist, could well be the seeds from which all supermassive black holes form, including the one at the center of the Milky Way. And the theory is simple and doesn't require a zoo of new particles to explain dark matter. This study shows that, without introducing new particles or new physics, scientists can solve mysteries of modern cosmology, from the nature of dark matter itself to the origin of supermassive black holes. So far, this idea is only a model, but it could be tested relatively soon. 
the James Webb Space Telescope, which launched on Christmas Day 2021, after years of delays, is specifically designed to answer questions about the origins of stars and galaxies. And the next generation of gravitational wave detectors, especially the laser interferometer space antenna, is poised to reveal much more about black holes, including primordial ones, if they exist. Together, the two observatories should give astronomers enough information to piece together the story of the first stars and potentially the origins of dark matter, something that could end up proving the existence of the multiverse. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which explains what would happen if you fell into a black hole. Do you think there is a parallel universe? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.